today. Let your word come to me today, the word that will not fall on the ground without doing that which you have commissioned that word to do in my life today. That is, send your word into me today. Begin to say to God, in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Lord, Lord Jesus, I am here today. Let your word meet my let need today. In the name of Jesus, me minister to us shame. today. Use your people Every for us today. today in the name of Jesus. Be, they will be and Thank you, Father, be. Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And as we pray, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. God in heaven shall meet your needs today. To the glory of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And at the end of today's uh, message, the Lord shall be praised in your life. Amen. And your yoke shall be broken. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My name is Prophet Larry Lotu. And the same man of God will be coming. He said again today. Evangelist Raphael Omotaya Jiboye. God bless you, sir. Amen. For being there for Amen. our unique God in heaven, the Father of our fathers. I believe the journey we have started with him, we shall finish well in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe that the journey you start with God, if you finish it, why don't you say big amen at home as well? Amen. You will finish that your race well. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall finish well. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You shall finish well. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And as this year is going to an end, you will finish this year well. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus amen. Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to the Lord Glory in the yes. Hallelujah. I say glory be to our God in the yes. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, is goodness. Hallelujah. Oh, is greatness. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know the Lord is having another unique word for us today. As we said earlier on, we are talking about everything that we need to understand to do so that our kingdom of God we are aspiring to achieve can be sure. The journey to a better life, which is the heavenly kingdom, can be very, very easy if we take on board all that I think the Lord is having for us this morning on board. Hallelujah. Amen. And the title of what God is giving to us this morning is the spirit to make life better. A spirit to make life better. And the Lord, you know, began to refer me to what he, 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 he said to me in the beginning of my ministry with him. That God said, I need to send you out to tell people about my kingdom. He said, is the, it is the highest assignment under heaven. And he began to let me realize that if one fails to do it, it's going to become a yoke. On that person. There are messages that people would not like to hear. It's a, it's a message of the truth of God. It's a message that talks without looking faces. So if you want to look into faces, you will not speak about the kingdom of God. Because that message of the kingdom is to chastise, to correct, to put right. 
It's not about a position. It's not about who you are. It's about God saying, I love you. I don't want to perish. Why don't you walk this way, this way, this way with me? Hallelujah. Amen. And I remember he said then, he said, listen, I, I saw my attribute in you. I created you like that so that you can know what to tell people about my kingdom. Whatever you don't do, you don't talk about it. Whatever you, do, whatever you don't do, don't preach it. Hallelujah. Amen. The spirit to make life better. To make life better does not mean the, the, the world you are living in. Eternal life. The spirit to make internal life better, better, better every day. Is what we're going to talk about today. And I want to let us know that the spirit that we are talking about is the spirit of God. And God himself is that spirit. You cannot separate God from his spirit. You cannot separate the spirit from God. And we want to see this morning what that spirit needs to give to man as soon as it comes to you and I. That if you want to enter into the kingdom of God, you must ask for this spirit. And what is it that this spirit should give unto you as soon as you get that spirit? Can you look for your Bible as you open with us this morning to the book of Isaiah chapter 11? Let's start from verse 1. There, verse shall, come, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. Yes, sir. Please go on, sir. And a branch shall grow out of its roots. Yes. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Yes. The spirit of wisdom. Yes. And understanding. Yes. The spirit of counsel. Yes. And mind. Yes. The spirit of knowledge. Yes. And of the fear of the Lord. Yes. His delight is in the fear of the Lord. Yes. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes. Yes. Nor decide by the hearing of his ear. Yes. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor. Yes. And they decide which he, uh, with equity for the meek of the earth. Yes. He shall strike the heart with the rod of his mouth. Yes. And with breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. Yes. Righteousness shall be the belt of his love. Yes. And the favorite be the belt of his ways. Yes. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. Yes. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. Uh -huh. The calf and the young lion and the falcon together. Yes. And the little child shall lead them. Uh -huh. The cow and the bear shall graze. Yes. They are young. Their young ones shall lie down together, uh -huh. and the lion shall eat straw like a, the ox. Yes. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole. Yes. And the wind child shall put his hand in the viper's den. Uh -huh. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Uh -huh. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Yes. As the waters cover the sea. Yes. And in that day, yes. there shall be a root of Jesus. Uh -huh. Who shall stand as a banner to the people. Uh -huh. For the Gentiles shall seek him. Uh -huh. And his resting place shall be glorious. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what we want to see this morning? This is why I want the man of God to finish reading that place was for us to understand what this spirit that we are talking about will bring to man as soon as you take in this spirit. In that verse, one will see where the Lord spoke about the spirit. He said, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And when this spirit of God rests upon somebody, what will happen? Let's see what the book of First Samuel says to us in chapter 10. And let's see what verse 9 to 16 says. When the Spirit of God comes into your life, what is it that God himself expects from you, from me, from us as leaders? You know, God is saying to me that the reason why I want this sermon to be preached at this time 
is that so many people believe they, 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 they aspire to have power, authority. They were asking for power, 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 authority, power, 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 so that they can demonstrate power to people. They can have people closer to themselves. They can have more numbers of people to their churches, to their, wherever they want people. They want eyes to be on them. Jesus Christ said, it is more than that. My kingdom is more than asking for power, 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 power every day. Without knowing what that power should bring to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are talking about what the spirit of God will bring to you as soon as you get it this morning. Yes, sir. So it was. So it was. When he had turned his back to go from Samuel. If you look at that chapter, you will see that it was about Saul. When Saul was looking for donkey in chapter 9, you know, donkey, the law orchestrated to happen so that he will catch him. And the Bible says, as soon as Saul turned away from Samuel, so what happened, sir? That God gave him another heart. And the Lord gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. As soon as he met with God in the life of Samuel, the Bible says, God changed his heart. The moment you meet with the Spirit of God, God will first change your heart. That's your old heart. The old you know, heart, the filthy heart will be changed. Because that power will come to demonstrate himself over you. Hallelujah. Amen. Then what happened thereafter, sir? When they came there to the hill. When they now came to the hill. There was a group of prophets. There was a group of prophets around. Then the Spirit of God came upon him. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul because God has met with him has changed his heart. When the Spirit of God is not convicting you. You will still remain the same person, Adam. And. So God will want to change your heart first for that spirit of God to do it, to reign supreme over you. If you have not given your heart to God, that spirit of God will not do what we are about to hear this morning. And do they, what do they say, sir? Then the spirit of God came upon him. And the spirit of God came upon him. And he prophesied among them. And he began to, to, to speak the word of God. He prophesied among them. Then what happened? And it happened. And it happened. When all who knew him. When all that knew him. Formerly saw that. <laughs> all he, that knew you formerly. <laughs> all that saw him yesterday. What did they say, sir? So that he indeed prophesied among the prophets. They saw him to be a new person among the prophets. Here are these prophet people of God that call themselves people of God. You are a minister of God. You must open your ears to hear this. It is better for you not to be a man of God than to call yourself a man of God or a Christian who believe in Jesus, and don't know what this should bring out of you. The moment you are choosing as a Levite, as a child of God, as a minister of God, what God is expecting from you is totally different to flesh. It's a matter of spirituality. What God is expecting from you is that that your old nature is forgotten. So that people will see that changes in you. They will see the characteristics of God in you. So that people will be marveled at what happened to this man. They saw him to be somebody of yesterday who has become a new person because they saw that he prophesied like them. What could have happened yesterday? What does he say? That. What is this that has, happened, has come upon the son of Kisi? What is this that has come upon the man that was mentioned Saul, the son of Kisi? What has happened to him? What has, what, what, has, what has quickly changed him? Suddenly changed him? You know, when the power of God comes over you, 
He doesn't struggle for lives to be one to himself. He has got the power to change everything. Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. sir. Is Saul also among the prophets? Is he among the prophets? Then the man from there answered. And the man then answered. And said. He said. But who is their father? But who is their father? Therefore, it became a proverb. It became a proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? Uh -uh, it, it, it became a, a, a proverb. Your life supposed to be a proverb. That yes, who changed this man? Who changed this person? You are a lover of work, money before. Lover of women before. Suddenly, they just see a change in you. Let them call you a child of God now. That is the message for this spirit of God to manifest in any lives. The same happened in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are getting there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 and 17, we are talking about the spirit of God. When the spirit of God comes over you, there must be a total change, a sudden, a sudden change that people will see. They will know. We are getting there. Unfortunately, today, people who support, Jesus Christ said, people supposed to understand what my spirit will bring over them. Who call themselves ministers of God? They don't understand. They, he said, go and tell them. They don't understand. They believe in power. They believe in authority. But they don't believe. They don't know what the Spirit of God is expecting from them. The Spirit of God is to kill flesh, to change your heart. So that the Spirit of God can walk the work of the Spirit of God inside of you. Yes, sir. When he had been baptized, when Jesus was baptized, after he had been dipped into the water, Jesus came up immediately. He came up immediately from the water. From the water. And behold, and behold, the heavens were open. The heavens were open unto him. And he saw the spirit of God descending And he like saw the spirit of God descend like dove. And lightning upon him. And lightning upon him. And suddenly, and suddenly, a voice came, a from, voice heaven, came from heaven. Saying, saying, This is my beloved this son. This is my beloved son. In whom, in whom I am well I am pleased. pleased. You know, when the Spirit of God comes over you, you will be declared to be a child of God because changes must come to your life. This Lord God that we are talking about is powerful. Is the one that will, that will showcase you. Is the one that will introduce you to the world. Is him that will introduce to people around you that you are a different person. You will not do things according to how people do it anymore. For God to declare Jesus his son, he knows what he's, he's doing, what he was saying. Because people might, be, might take him to be one of them. Look at Saul that was one of them yesterday. The moment that God came over him, they saw difference in him. Hallelujah. Amen. And when this spirit of God come over you, Jesus Christ said, there are some things people don't understand that this spirit expected of us. In that same book of Isaiah we read, there are some things that Jesus Christ said we need to understand for us to achieve that home that we are aspiring to get to. If you lack it, we just walk aimlessly in the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter the title you carry. You can be a bishop, apostle. You can demonstrate power of God. Jesus Christ said, if those things were failed out of that's your administration. He said you will lack the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You will lack that kingdom of God. Because he says some people will get home and they will say, Lord, I heal in your name. He will tell them, I don't know you. Because all these things that have been preached, he says you ignore them. You think they are not valuable to your worship. What does he say, sir? In that same Verse 2, he said, the spirit 
of, of God will call upon him. Yeah. And when this spirit of God come upon him, it will bring wisdom and understanding. Yeah. We are going to talk about that today. The spirit of God, when it comes upon you as a child of God, it will automatically come with wisdom and understanding. Because this word of God we are talking about has gotten them as a package. It will bring understanding and wisdom upon you. We want to see the kind of power in the wisdom that God releases over his people today. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us see what the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 and 9 says. We are talking about wisdom and understanding when you carry this spirit of god over you wisdom must work automatically in you but god said these people are just ignoring all these spirits and they clamoring on power and authority always yes sir Wisdom is the principal Wisdom things. is the principal thing. Therefore, number one thing. Pre the wisdom that we are talking about is number one. Principal thing before God. When this will of God comes over you, he wants you to have this wisdom. What does he say will happen there after Therefore, that? Therefore, get wisdom. Get wisdom. And in all your getting, and in all your getting, get understanding. Get understanding. You cannot separate the two. <laughs> you cannot say you carry. You know the Bible says, "The spirit of God will come over you, then power will follow." You cannot say you carry spirit of God and power without wisdom and understanding. You will fail. You will see what this thing will bring about man. When you, understand, when you allow what understanding should bring out of you and wisdom that is generating in our kingdom today. Great understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. If you don't have it, what does the Bible say we should do about it? Exhort her. Exhort her. And she will promote you. And she will promote you. Exhort her. You know, you know, you know, you know, thank God. Look at the way the way the Bible describes the spirit of God. It's her. She has got she has gotten so many things to deliver. As a woman who has given that power to deliver, to give birth, not men, no, not man, not man, not people who are just changing their their access to these days. Woman that God created as woman has been given power. To, to give birth. And he said, give room for this because it will give birth. Not all her exhort her. Yes, sir. She will bring you honor. She will bring you honor. Promote you. It will promote you. When you embrace her. When you embrace wisdom and understanding. That is when honor will come your way. So many people today, they don't have honor. In the society, they don't have honor. They don't have honor in the churches, even in the mosque. In the land they live, they don't have honor. They, people are just, they are just uh, say, hailing them. Oh, you know, they, yes, sir. We are right. They don't have honor. They know what they do. They, they will respect you. Even when people don't respect you, you yourself will know that, oh my God, I am doing the will of God. And God in heaven will declare you awesome. Yes, sir. She, she, uh, she will place you on your head. She will place you on your head. She will place on your head. She will place on your head. An ornament of grace. You know, when you, when you carry this wisdom and understanding, it will carry, it will put on you honor. Honor. You know, authority of God will come over you. A crown of glory. A crown of glory will she, be on you. She will deliver to you. Hallelujah. Amen. A crown of glory will be given unto you. People cannot despise you because already you have gotten that wisdom and understanding of God. We are getting there now. You will not just do things anyhow. You will not rush to, to do things. 
What does the book of Proverbs say, sir? I mean, James chapter 1, verse 5, what does it say? Hallelujah. Amen. We are talking about wisdom and understanding today. What that understanding brings to man. Yes, sir. If any of you lack if wisdom. any of you that is listening today, to me today, if you lack wisdom, if you lack understanding, if you are somebody who carry spirit of God before you think, yes, I carry with, uh, spirit of God, yes, because I prophesy in church, because I do this. If you still don't understand what God is expecting your life to deliver to people, you still need wisdom. What does he say we should do, sir? Let him ask of God. Let that person ask of God. If you don't have, have understanding and wisdom, your duty is to ask from God that will do what, sir? Who gives to all? Who gives to all? Liberally. Liberally. And without reproach. He will not give it to you because of your money, because of your wealth. Without reproach. And it will be given God to will you. not see your status. He will not see that you are poor or rich. For him to give you wisdom. All he wants you to do is to ask for it. You want to see a man who asks for wisdom in the Bible. And what that wisdom will give to your, to, to your kingdom as human being. When the Spirit of God is over you, Jesus Christ knew that no man can walk this work of salvation without the Spirit of God. And that was why he ordered his disciples to stay in Jerusalem. See, they will be, and, and, you know, and deal with this spirit of God and power. Then they can function very well. But today we have ignored what those things God wanted to come to us. Through that spirit of God, we have ignored them. And we are just doing things the way we like because we, like, we want power and we want uh, to demonstrate that power of God and authority. Our position, we ignore those things that God needed from us. They are very simple to the kingdom of God. It will just it will usher you to your honor if you allow him or or her in your life. What does he say, sir? In the book of First King, chapter three. First King, chapter six. From verse 6 to 13. First King. King, the book of First King. Yes, chapter. Chapter 3. Yes, sir. Chapter 3. Yes, chapter 3. From verse 6 to 13. And Solomon said. And Solomon said. You have shown great mercy to your you servant. You have shown great mercy to your servant. My David, father. My father. My father, David. Yes, sir. Because he walked before you because in truth. Because he walked in you in truth. In righteousness. In righteousness. And in uprightness of heart. In uprightness of heart. With you. Those are the characteristics that God is expecting from you. We are still getting there. Yes, sir. You have continued this greatness. This you have continued for him. this greatness with him. Yes, sir. And you have given him a son to sit on his throne. You have then given him myself to rule on his throne. And it is this day. And it is this day. Now. Now. Oh Lord my God. Oh Lord my God. You have made your servant king instead of my father David. Yes. But I am a little child. I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or, or come in. I don't know anything. I don't know how to do things. I don't know how to go out and come in. Many of us, because of our age, we think, yes, we have, we have gotten all power to do everything by ourselves. But this guy said, I am a little child. If you don't see yourself as a little child in the hand of the Holy Spirit, you will think you have arrived. Then you will ignore some things that Jesus really expected of you and I to do. Yes, sir. And your servant is in the midst of your people. And your servant is in the midst of your people. Whom you have chosen. People of God. What understanding will bring to you as soon as you get the Spirit of God is that 
everyone around you must be recognized as a child of God, people of God, regardless of their age, their religion. There are so many of you that is in church today who is fervent for Jesus Christ, who was in their position yesterday, you are an alert yesterday, an abalist here yesterday, idol worshiper yesterday, and today you are a singer for Christ Jesus. If I may tell you that you must recognize everybody as a child of God, that is the understanding that the Spirit of God will bring to you. You must not see yourself above any other person. That was the reason why Jesus Christ said, you must become a servant. If you don't see yourself as a servant, either you are a president of a nation, if you are a senator, oh my God, it, it doesn't matter where you come from or who you are, you must see yourself as a servant to everyone. That is where you will not see yourself above the loss of the Lord. That's the only reason why you will not walk in vain in this corridor of the kingdom of God. It is very essential, says Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, Satan came to Jesus. He found nothing with him. It's because he didn't misbehave. Many of us are misbehaving today because of position and power. Hallelujah. Amen. What does he say for that, sir? A great people, too numerous to be number your, counted. Your great people, yes, sir. Therefore, Therefore, give to your servant. Give to me your servant. An understanding heart. Understanding heart. To judge your people. Understanding heart. Understanding heart. To judge your people. That I may discern between good and evil. That I might discern between good and evil. Today, so many people don't know how to give judgment. Whatever comes to their table goes the perverse judgment, even in the household of God, where the Spirit of God should be leading people. Whatever you are not there when people talk about, you don't just need to give judgment over it anyhow. It might take you away, far away from God. The person you gave, you know, a wrong judgment about will not like you. His spirit will not preach, you know, will not love you. And this man said, God, give me understanding, spirit, heart, to judge your people. Many of us today, we think church is our business. It is not your business. <laughs> it is the business of God. It is not your franchise. It is the franchise of Jesus. So you must do it according to his rules and laws. The law of God in heaven. Even if you don't believe in Jesus. As soon as you believe that people that you are gathering together is for heavenly kingdom. Whatever channel you want to. Some people they don't believe in Holy Ghost. They believe in God. And they are aspiring for the kingdom of God. Do everything right. And let him come and visit you thereafter to know who will get to heaven or not. What does he say for that, sir? For who is able to judge these great people of yours? Who is able to judge your people? The Spirit please the Lord. The Spirit lead. It is the Spirit of God that we need to lead us. To judge his people right. Yes, sir. The Spirit pleased the Lord. It is the Spirit that pleased God. Speech. And... You know, that is the Spirit of God is it that pleased the Lord. And that is where the speech of God comes through. And he says something further. That Solomon had asked these things. Then God said to him. God said to him. Because you have asked this thing. Because you have asked this thing. And have not asked long life for yourself. You have not asked long life for yourself. No, have no, I've asked riches for there, yourself. There are so many people in ministry today that they are all about riches, 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 riches. People in their church doesn't know how to forgive people. People in their corridor of power, they don't know how to they don't know how to you know how to how to how to de devise good things against evil. They don't know how to just forsake the evil way for good ways. 
They are liars. They don't know how to speak the truth. Even the church of God, they can lie against anybody. And you think it is true. But for you to devise the, the difference between that good and bad, you must allow the Spirit of God that brings wisdom and understanding before you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And if you want to know read for that, when you go to verse 16, you will see the judgment. We are not going to this. The judgment that Solomon gave after the giving of that Spirit of God. God actually gave him that Spirit. To rule his people. And go and read that, you will see that too late. When they brought those two children, one that was died, one, one was dead, and one was alive. The judgment he gave was perfect. The Bible says, and to the hearing of everyone in that community, that city, they say, wow, because he allowed the wisdom and the understanding of God to lead him. Hallelujah. Amen. The same happened to our Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of John chapter 8. So that you think it's you alone. From verse 1, what does, what does that But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Yes, sir. Now early in the morning. Now early in the morning. He came again to the temple. Yes, sir. And all the people came to him. Yes. And he sat down and taught them. Yes. Then the scribes and the Pharisees talked brought to him. Even when he was teaching in the church, in the temple. That is where devil want to destroy you, finish you. Your ambition doesn't matter to the to, 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 to devil. That is where he will not even leave you. To come out of that temple where you are. They went to him where he was teaching the temple. They want to get him there. As is happening today. Yes, sir. They brought uh, him to him a woman caught in adultery. They brought a woman that was caught in adultery to him. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him. When they have set her in the midst of that gathering, they said to him. Teacher. Teacher. This woman was caught in adultery. We caught her in adultery. In the very act. In the very act. <laughs> now Moses in the law. And in the law of Moses, which is the law of God. Not Moses' law. The law of God that was given to Moses. Commanded us that such should be he stolen. Commanded us that such should be stolen. But what do you say? But what do you say? This they said. This they said. Testing him. They were testing him. That they might have something of which to accuse him. They might have something to accuse him, but to Jesus, get him. But Jesus stood down. He stood down. And wrote on the ground. He began to think. <laughs> with his finger. With his finger. And as though he did not hear. As, as if he didn't hear. So when they continue asking him. When they began to ask him. He raised himself he up. He raised up himself. And said to them. He said to them. He who is without sin among he you. He that have not sin among you. Let him throw a stone at her first. Let him throw a stone to her at first. And again. And again. He stooped down. He stood down. And wrote on the ground. He wrote on the ground again. Then those who had it, yes, be, being confited by their conscience, conscience uh -huh. went out one by one. Hallelujah. Beginning and with the oldest, even to the last. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hello, good morning, caller. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. God bless you, sir. Good morning. God bless you. What do you want God to do for you quickly, please? <laughs> Sorry? The line is breaking. We lost it. Yes. You know, there are so many people in church. There was a day, some a, a family, they came to, to me some years back. And the husband and wife, they have this quarrel. They now went to this man of God. People of God, listen as a man of God, as a woman of God. Don't think people in your church doesn't have understanding or knowledge or wisdom. They went to that man, you know, with their colony, mind, and heart. And when they got there, after they have, you know, told him their stories, and the man of God said, where, where is she come, where is she from? 
Oh. And the husband, the woman mentioned uh, yes. her place, where she came from. And the man of God said, that's how they behave in your, in your community. And the husband said he was ashamed of coming to the man of God. Because he didn't expect him to say that. Hello, good morning. I can't I'm going to call this woman. 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 I'm going to Hallelujah. Amen. As a, as, as, a, as a people under the kingdom of God, either in your family, wherever you are, wherever you are, either you are at home, at your place of work, whenever somebody comes to tell you a story about somebody else, don't give judgment outside, behind that person. Don't side your wife. Don't side your husband. Don't side what, that's your friend. If you are not there, because you might give a wrong judgment. Jesus Christ knew that that was the law. But don't forget, he had been preaching about forgiveness, 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 repentance, repentance. <laughs> Where would that have worked if he gave order? To kill that woman. People of God, many are doing so in churches today. Air, just air says, they are using against one another in the community. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Hello, good morning, ma'am. God bless you, sir. God bless you too. What do you want God to do for you today, please? I want you to join me in prayer that God will make the power of darkness in my father's house. Lord Jesus. According to the desire of your daughter this morning, yes, I Lord. prophesy into your life yes, Lord. that the light of the Lord will take over, will cover yes. that darkness in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because you believe in that word of God, receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. And so shall Amen. it be. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' Amen. name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, believe in what God has said to you this morning. I believe you listen to what God is saying this morning. Yes, sir. That spirit of God will work out that wonders of God in your life. Amen. Are you with me now? Just go and read yes. Psalm 50. Read that Psalm for seven times today. And let God work out every other thing in your life. You shall give your testimony to God. Amen. Later by February next year, you see what God has done in your life. Clearly. Amen. God bless Amen. you. God bless Amen. Amen. God bless Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless Amen. you. People of God, you know, I won't be able to go further because of our time today. Hallelujah. Amen. We are talking about wisdom of God and the understanding of God. Next week, by the grace of God, I believe God wants us to deal with that chapter very well. So that people can know that it is not about power, it's not about authority, it's not about somebody come to tell you something and go and do this. And, and you had it, you think it is right. You, didn't, you did, did not ask God. You didn't allow God to speak back to you. Either it's right or not. You just carry it out. At the end of the day, the thing backfire against your ministry. That is why people are leaving your church. This is why people are just leaving you. This is why people are just, you know, they hate you because you don't reason with the Spirit of God that you have work out wonders in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, because of our time this morning, yes, I have my numbers on the screen. If you want to call after this program, because I believe um, we, we started late this morning. Sorry about that, people. By next week, we shall meet by the grace of God earlier than never you know expected 
He said, I'll be well with you as you do so this morning. Amen. That yes, you want to believe that um, God will meet your need according to the desire of your heart. Amen. As I pray for those who want to call in this morning and their call could not come in, that the desire of your heart shall be given unto you in the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. God the Holy Spirit, Amen. where you need to know God more. For God to sort out your problem. Amen. Go and know him now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And the power of God will take us over. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you for that. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, if you want to know more about the program we have in ICA, you can call me on my mobile. I will I will tell you, we are gathering together to teach ourselves the will of God. It's not a church program, like I said. You cannot be misled by the grace of God against the will of God for you, so that you can be useful in your own church as well. It shall be well with you. Amen. For me and from the man of God, before we meet the same time next week, go and manifest in the will of God. Amen. Thank you. Shepherds with wonder receive it. Sing out of what you believe it. Wonderful story of love. 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 Wow.